Hey guys, it's a Girl Got Game, and welcome to another Gander video. Today, we've got some awesome music to introduce one romantic date, hold the awkward. <laughs> uh, I saw this game floating around my Twitter feed, and I was very excited because I haven't looked at anything Undertale related in a hot minute. And I fondly, fondly remember the days of uh, falling in love with a certain spaghetti skeleton. Good times, good times. And so when I saw you could date him in this visual novel that was made for Nano Reno, I was like, yo, I gotta try this out. So yeah, it's very short. It was made by Derpy Chocho this year for Nano Reno. And I thought, hey, why not? <laughs> Let's have some fun and check this out. It looks like a good time. The um, description for the game is, you ask your skeleton crush on a date and he says yes, but then the panic sets in. What if you say the wrong thing? What if he realizes he doesn't like you? Don't worry, your friends are here to help. Or maybe that's the perfect reason to worry. So we got Alphys, Undyne, and Sans, of course, as our wing guys. So yeah, how can we possibly fail to date Papyrus properly? That being said, before I jump into this, if you haven't experienced the joy that is Undertale, stop watching this, go play Undertale. It's a fantastic game, cannot recommend it enough. Because this, from this point forward, I will reference probably several Undertale things. I'll probably get a lot of them wrong because I haven't thought about it in a long time. But you've been warned, spoilers ahead, most probably. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's start a new game. <gasps> Log in. I gotta pick my name, ooh. Hmm. As a nod to the main character from Undertale, with a twist. Welcome, Frisky. <laughs> it's the great Papyrus. I assume I just, oop, just took on you there. Oh, there we go. Now, one weird thing is I can see the mouse on my recording software, but not on my screen. So if you're wondering why I'm derping around, that's why. Such aggressive rings. We have a really nice place. You hang up. I can't. I finally call him after staring at my phone for an hour. And I just hang up. Good job, me. You flop onto your bed, your eyes towards the ceiling. Ask him on a date, they say. It'll be easy, they say. My hands are shaking, and my stomach's in knots. I wonder how he feels about me. Just the other day, he told me we should hang out more. Does that mean anything? Listen to me. Getting my hopes up. Hanging out. That's a friend thing. This is the great Papyrus I'm talking about. He could have anyone he wanted. Besides, I bet he's already dating someone anyway. <laughs> what a great ringtone! Ah! Oh no! He's calling back? Okay. Just stay calm. It's fine. Hey, Papyrus! What's up? Hello, human. I too was going to ask what is up. <gasps> Voice acting, how delightful. I love that. I was about to pick up, but my cell phone stopped ringing before I could answer. Also, I think I read somewhere on the page that this takes place above ground, so like after the events of Undertale, and you're an adult now, so keep that in mind too. Is everything all right? Yeah, everything's good. Sorry about that. I, uh, accidentally dropped my phone. My dear friend, you must be more careful. 
Spoon mishaps are a guaranteed recipe for disaster. Yeah. You're right. Friend. Now then, why exactly did you call? I assume there's something you wish to tell me. Come on, it's now or never. Just ask him. Just say something. Well, yeah, there's something I did want to ask you. <laughs> Do you want date? Uh, hmm. How direct? <laughs> date? Um... Do you? Do... You? Want... Want... Why can't I say anything? Human, did the call cut off? Date? Date? Do you want date? Don't forget the extra uh, ellipses. Are you asking me on a romantic outing? Romantic. Or are you offering me a piece of fruit? <laughs> Good question. Um, the first one, if you want to. But if you'd rather have the fruit, I totally get it. Well, of course. I'd be honored to accompany you on the most romantic of outings. Don't break my heart again, Papyrus. I can't do it again. W wait! Really? Absolutely. Do you have any ideas? Uh, oh, I don't. Sorry. Honestly, I didn't think I'd get this far. Big mood. No need for apologies. I have an idea of my own. Does it involve spaghetti? Meet me at Newest Home Park around 5.30 p.m. tomorrow. Newest Home Park. Okay, sure. I'll see you then. Perfect. I look forward to it. Good night, human. Good night, Papyrus. I did it! He said yes. <laughs> he said yes?! Oh, no. Alright, be cool, Frisky. This is what you wanted. This is good. I have to call Alphys. Alphys, you know all about the dating. Hello? Oh, your voice is so cute. Alphys, help me have a date with Papyrus. I can't believe you said yes, but I'm nervous because what if he realizes it was a mistake and- Oh my god, you actually asked him? You deciphered all that, well done. And he said yes? I am going down with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alphys, please! I need your help! My help? But I'm, uh, not the best at dating. Oh, come on! You've been going out with Undyne for ages now, by Surely. Come on. You gotta have some ideas. Says the one with the cool girlfriend. I just need someone to walk me through it. I could barely ask him out just now. Sweat heart. I said, and I quote, Do you want date? That's unfortunate. I know! But if you could help me, maybe suggest what I should say? Like a dating sim! Actually, dating sims rely more on stat building and time management. You know what I mean, Alphys. Just give me a walkthrough for what I need to do. Visual novels, on the other hand, are purely choice-based. Alphys, please! It'll just be for this first date. Uh Okay. I'll do it. Aw, oh, thanks. Here's the plan. I'll deliver a pair of earbuds to your mailbox tomorrow morning. Ah, you're gonna walk me through it. Nice. They should be discreet enough to wear on your date. And you'll still hear Papyrus just fine. Just, uh, call me when you're about to meet him. Got it. Thank you, Alphys. I owe you one. Talk to you tomorrow. Talk to you tomorrow. Such a sweetie. What a night! I need to sleep. 
You get ready for bed with thoughts of papyrus in your head. And the excitement continues gnawing at your stomach. You plug in your phone to charge. Okay, I've got a plan. This is a good plan. It'll be fine. I got this. The next day. Ooh, fancy. 5.15, we're a little late. You arrive at newest home park, dressed to impress, but feeling like a mess. In your ears are the earbuds Alpha's left for you. You glance at your phone. 5.15, just enough time. Oh right, it's at 5.30, not 5 o'clock. Doesn't look like Papyrus is here yet. Good. Um, hello? Alphys! This is Alphys. I'm here. <laughs> Why are you nervous? I'm the one on the date. Thank goodness. Can you hear me okay? I yes, I can. Can you hear us? Us? Yes, loud and clear. Alphys, these earbuds are amazing. You've really outdone your... Wait. What do you mean, us? Us? D d did I say us? I meant to say me. Can you hear me? <laughs> Mm hmm Why do you sound so unsure? Well, you see, I, uh... She's not the only one here, punk! Hey, Undyne. You didn't think I'd miss a chance like this, did ya? Uh, Undyne? Is that you? Yup, that's Undyne. <laughs> Why the disbelief? Hi, fans. Does she sound... fishy? Oi, 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 oi. Sa- Damn it, Sans! Who else is there? Just the three of us. I overheard Alfie here talking to you about your little plan. So I wanted in. And because Sans is Papyrus' brother, I had to tell him. You did not. So he wanted in. Don't worry, buddy. I approve. <laughs> Thanks. And now we're here to help. So don't sweat it. Uh, I'm so sorry. Alphys, you're fine. I'm not mad. Just overwhelmed please you guys i need this to go well of course it'll go well you got me on your side here's what you gotta do you gotta cut to the chase okay but don't make any big moves okay don't beat around the bush okay but don't put everything out there I feel like i'm getting conflicting information let them know how you feel discreetly <laughs> discreetly you've got three people cheering you on you can't lose right I feel like screaming. Hey, deep breaths. Just enjoy yourself. Keep it lighthearted. Throw in a joke or three. You'll be fine. You're right. I just- Hello, human! Hello, Papyrus. Ah! That's the opposite of deep breaths. <laughs> Papyrus's face. I love the blue bone um, hoodie dongles. That's a great detail. I'm sorry. Uh, did I startle you? I'm just excited for our date. Uh, me too! Oh, wow, we. You look absolutely radiant. M me? Radiant? I, uh. Th thank you! And you look. Uh. Tell him he looks hot as hell! <laughs> yeah! No, that's too forward! Just say he looks nice! Tell him he's so cool, it's ice to see him. Oh my gosh, Sans. Sans, we can't pun our way through this. Right? Especially with Papyrus. Don't know until you try. Sans, I'm gonna suplex you! Oh boy. What did I get myself into? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Who do I wanna follow? Papyrus loves his brother, but he's always calling him out on his puns. Uh, I feel Alphys' approach is a little too subtle. I, I want to go, I want to go Undyne. Undyne and him are like best buds, so you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. You look hot as hell! <laughs> Worth it. You slap your hand over your mouth. Please tell me I didn't actually say it. Oh my god! You actually said it! High five, girl! Undyne, what have you done? 
<laughs> you flatter me. <laughs> Unless you meant that I look hot temperature-wise. In which case, no need to worry. I am at a comfortable temperature. Well then, shall we start the date? Oh, yeah, of course. Let's, uh, start dating. I could have worded that better. Maybe next time you should try dating start. Dating the starto. You walk with Papyrus until you reach the edge of the park. You can see a beautiful view of the city skyline. Papyrus walks over to one of the benches up ahead and gestures for you to take a seat. And you do so. He takes a seat next to you and opens his bag. With a flourish, he pulls out two champagne flutes and a bottle of sparkling cider. Fancy. <laughs> Ooh, sparkling cider. How fancy. Only the best for my day. I wanted today to be special after all. He pops open the bottle and pours some cider into a champagne flute. Then he offers it to you. Once you take the glass, he pours some for himself. I thought we should start with a toast. Okay. I care to toast to anything in particular? It's only fair of me to offer my date the honor. Me? Uh, oh, sure thing. You raise your glass. Um, a toast? That's not toast, Butto. That's sparkling cider. <laughs> toast to romance, punk! <laughs> Do it! <laughs> <laughs> Do it. No balls. Uh, I think it's safer to toast to a nice day. I... Are you unsure of your toast? Deciding if I want butter or jam. Just give me a second. That's not toast. <laughs> hmm... I'm still feeling the undying, to be honest. <laughs> to romance! No, no, I'm fine! You thrust your glass in the air. Some of your drink splashes out. To romance! Lots and lots of romance! You tell him! <laughs> That's quite the toast. Someone's cutting to the chase, as it were. Hey! Very well, then. He accepted my toast. He taps his glass against yours. The musical clink snaps you back to attention. To romance. With the most divine human I know. Oh, you flatterer, you. Mm. You stop yourself mid-gasp, holding it in. Don't forget to take a sip. A sip? Don't forget to breathe! <laughs> Thanks, Alphys. You take a sip of the cider. The bubbles tickle your nose. It matches the fluttering in your stomach. You okay there, kid? I'm great. We can hear you breathing into the mic. <laughs> well, excuse me. Uh, knees weak, arms heavy. My spaghetti. <laughs> what? Sorry, what about your spaghetti? What? Oh, I apologize for not bringing my spaghetti. Aww. Sad. Miss Toriel suggested that tiny little sandwiches would be a better picnic option. Probably. Like, cold spaghetti be a little difficult. Sandwiches are easier, but spaghetti... Feel free to take whatever catches your fancy. You snatch up a sandwich. Looks great, Papyrus! Whoa, hold on. Don't freak out. It's going great so far. Right? He went through all this trouble just for you. I think he likes you. Exactly. Besides, if the awkwardness was too much, he would have ended the date already. They're right. It hasn't been awful. Just... awkward. And he's clearly still here. You take a deep breath. And for the first time during this whole date, you manage to push your nerves away just enough. We're rooting for you. And if I know my bro, he's rooting for you too. <laughs> True. Thank you. You're most welcome. Oh, whoops. You enjoy your tiny little sandwich along with your sparkling cider. Papyrus doesn't take a sandwich, but he seems content with his cider. He eases you into light conversation. 
Thankfully, the hidden trio leave you to speak for yourself. But their cheers and teasing don't let up. Oddly enough, their presence helps you calm down too. The longer the conversation lasts, the more confident you become. An hour passes and you don't even notice. But Papyrus does. Oh, it's almost time. Almost time? Yes, there's something I wanted to share with you. The very reason I selected this very park in this very spot. Okay. Look towards the skyline. <laughs> you look up towards the skyline. And you watch as the sun begins to retreat behind the city. It paints the sky and the buildings with warm golden hues. A natural masterpiece. Oh, wow. I still remember when I saw the sun for the first time. Mm hmm When we emerged from the underground, I was instantly drawn to it. I can see why. The sun is bright and unwavering. You'd be drawn to something just like you. Aww. Yes, that's very true. However, that's only one faucet of it. Faucet? I soon learned there was so much more to love about the sun. There are so many shades to it. Whether it hangs high for all to see, hides behind the buildings, or uses a cloud as a offset goofy mustache, I still found the sun to be radiant. Radiant? Well, when you put it that way, it makes the sun sound wonderful. You both stay silent, allowing the sunset rays to cascade over you both. Eventually, the sun slips beneath the horizon, taking the warmth along with it. <sighs> Are you cold? No, I just like to say burr. A little bit, yeah. Wait, are you not cold? Not at all. My bones are actually quite warm. Here, see for yourself. Papyrus takes your hands in his. And you scream on the inside. All of that budding confidence from earlier. Gone. Don't panic. You're doing great. <laughs> you should ask if he needs a hand. Oh my god. This is a serious moment. Don't be silly. But I'm not silly. I'm Sans. Silly can be my middle name. I thought your middle name was The. <laughs> okay, you two. This is no time for jokes. Listen to me. Don't you dare let go of his hands. <laughs> Squish him. But, but he might think you're lingering too long. Pull your hands away. Alfie, are you saying you wouldn't want me to sweep you off your feet? Uh, whoa! Then gaze into your eyes. Aw, oh, I'm missing some quality time with these two. Nine, you're making me b blush. Exactly. And that's why you can't let go either, punk. This is a fight for love! <laughs> Need a hand? I'm just picturing looking at papyrus under this, like, Need a hand? <laughs> you know what? We're going the Undyne route. Girl gets me. You continue holding his hands. His warmth is comforting. You're right. Your bones are warm. Yeah, <laughs> told you so. Papyrus squeezes your hands. You give them a little squeeze in return. Thank you for sharing the sunset with me. I have to admit, I'm surprised we're not doing something more active. Not that I'm disappointed. This is really, really nice. I understand your surprise. Yes, I'm normally moving about, doing this, that, or the other. But I could stay still in this moment forever with you. Papyrus. Let's go! Yeah! Woo, woo, woo! Ah! <sighs> and I know! Don't yell directly into the... Your first instinct is to remove the earbuds. You grip them in your hands. Are you all right? Uh. Uh-oh. Are you hurt? Here, allow me to have a look. He takes your hands and gently pries the earpieces from them. You can hear a bit of the commotion on the other line. Is someone... speaking? W well... 
you see. Hello, who is this? Mo, oh, hello, Alphys. <laughs> you guys are the worst. And Undyne, too. And Sans? Sans? Why are the three of you here? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ah, is that what this setup is for? I see. <laughs> That's utterly adorable. Nah. Thank you for cheering us on. However, I think we can take it from here. You three have a good night. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh-oh, what do they say to you? Uh, Undyne, what are you... You too, Alphys. Yes, I am, Sans, and I hate that you somehow know that. <laughs> good night. Oh, of course. He hands the earbuds back to you. There you are. They wish to bid you good night as well. You take the earbuds from Papyrus and place them back in your ears. H Hello? Hiya. You've reached Sans' skeleton. He's not here right now. Uh-huh. Really? <laughs> Night, kiddo. I fell for the old voicemail trick. It's all on you now, punk. You've got this. I got this, Undyne. If you get the chance to kiss him, you better. Oh, yeah. Later. No worries. D don't worry about the earbuds. Just keep them safe until we meet up again. Talk to you tomorrow. G good night. Good night, guys. You sheepishly put the earbuds away. You won't be needing them for the rest of the night. As much fun as we've had, it's getting late. Shall I give you a ride back home? Sure, I'd like that. The car ride was uneventful. You watched as the newest home city lights passed you by. You couldn't bring yourself to say anything. Papyrus being uncharacteristically quiet didn't help either. You wondered what was on his mind. Probably whatever the uh, Three Musketeers told him. Eventually, you arrive in front of your apartment building. Papyrus gets out of the car and opens the passenger side door for you. And you step out. Thanks for driving me back home. Please, it was hardly an inconvenience. Allow me to escort you to the entrance. He offers his arm, and you gladly take it. A chilly air lingers, trying to pry away your attention. But you lean against Papyrus, taking comfort in his warmth as you walk arm in arm. I truly enjoyed our date. Me too. But I must say, you were very... overt. Overt is a new covert, my friend. Well... If it wasn't for Alphys, Undyne, Sands, and their, uh, encouragement, I don't think I would have said any of those things. Did I really call you hot? I mean, you are! I mean, you're very attractive, handsome. It's just... It's a first date, and I... <laughs> now, now, don't be embarrassed. I found the whole thing charming. Charming? You got a weird definition of charming. It was charming because you made your feelings so very obvious. And I'm grateful for that. Now I know how you feel about me without question. That's what I was going for. He lets go of your arm, reaching out to stroke your cheek. Because of that, it's only fair that I do the same. And what better way to express my feelings than with the most romantic of kisses? Romantic? P Papyrus? He scoops you up into his arms and spins you around. <laughs> <laughs> and you both burst into laughter. The world blends together into one cohesive feeling. Pure adoration. He halts his twirling, still carrying you so your feet don't touch the ground. It gives you a moment to catch your breath. But it's simply taken away again when Papyrus firmly presses his smile against yours. And you decide right there and then that you never want to come back down. Unfortunately, your feet do touch the ground again as he breaks the kiss. But his warmth still lingers on your lips. It'd be weird to kiss the skeleton, actually. <laughs> That'd be a really weird feeling. It's the undeniable proof of how he carried you onto cloud nine. Good night, sunshine. Aww. <laughs> Good night, Papyrus. So cute. 
Whew, I feel about as energetic as my phone right now. <laughs> the exhaustion from the day finally sets in once you're inside your apartment. You get ready for bed with thoughts of papyrus in your head once again. But the excitement continues fluttering inside your stomach. You plug in your phone to charge, and you set aside the eavesdropping earbuds. He called me Sunshine. Oh yeah, I just realized the significance of that. He was just talking about how the sun is radiant and all that. That's sweet. You bring your fingers to your lips. You can still feel his smile on yours. Hm. I'll have to thank Alphys, Undyne, and Sands tomorrow. Papyrus side, ending one of four. Let's cut to the chase. Do, 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 do. Yay! We got our first ending. It is really short. Based on the characters from Undertale by Toby Fox. Okay, cool. And there's Derpy Chow Chow. Who worked on this game for Nano Reno. Mimshi? Mimishi? Character artist. The art was beautiful. Loved it. Super cute. Ah! Played both Skelebros. Very nicely done. Alvis's voice was super cute. Definitely suited her perfectly. And of course, Undyne. Nailed exactly how I always pictured Undyne's voice in my head. <laughs> and Danda's voices did the sound design. Ending scenes. Lovely. And plus more. I'm just jamming to the music in the back. I am sad I didn't hear a bone trussle in there at some point. <laughs> but I love the um, remixed versions of the songs from Undertale. That was super cute. All right, I wanna see. Oh, look at that, we got a snapshot. So there you go. So you can replay the endings you get. Cute. You know, because that was short, I might be able to actually get the other endings. Let's try. Why not? I enjoyed that enough. Frisky, come back to me, and then I'm gonna make a save this next time. Can't see my mouse. There we go. Thank you. Okay. I've, I've, I'm pretty confident I know exactly how to get these endings. We gotta do an, uh, an all Alphys run, an all Sans run. And then a mixture of the three. Okay. Uh, let's save here so I can come back. Save. Wow, so many sla save slots for this. <laughs> uh, there we go. Back. Okay, that ought to do it. Um, yes, we'll we'll save Sans for last because that'd be great. You look n nice. Your face is very warm for some reason. Why? Thank you. I'm glad you think so. I I mean, I knew this would be a great outfit. 10 out of 10. But it's nice to receive confirmation from you. Oh my god, this ship practically sails itself. <laughs> yes. This will be easy. You'll be kissed before you know it. Oh my god, I hope you two kiss. <laughs> but he doesn't have lips. Shut up, Sans. Sans, don't ruin this for me. Well then, shall we start the date? Oh, yeah, of course. All right, date start. Let us toast to a nice day. Oh, I was just trying to think of something, but I think I got it. You timidly raise your glass. To a nice day. Yes, to a nice, wonderful day. 
You and Papyrus clink your glasses together. Boring. I know. No, this is fine. It's nice and subtle. And I'm glad I get to share such a nice, wonderful day with someone as nice and wonderful as you. Aww. <laughs> That's more like it. You go, Papyrus. Yeah. Woo woo. <laughs> I love Undyne. I'm glad I get to share it with you, too. Okay. We're back. One more. Pull my hand away quickly. You pull your hands away from Papyrus. They retreat to the safety of your lap. Aw, sad. Are you alright? You've been awfully nervous. That's a word for it, yeah. I want you to know, there's no need to be so nervous around me. He coaxes your hands back out, giving them a firm squeeze. Aw. You don't have to try to impress me. You already did on day one. Mm. Papyrus, I... Let's go! <laughs> Alright, so Undyne's always going to yell in our ears. Great. The two of you walk hand in hand towards the entrance. And whether you're trembling from the cool air or the looming anxiety, it's anyone's guess. Ahem. Uh, I suppose we've reached the end of our date now, haven't we? He lets go of your hand. Papyrus? You... Our date was... Well... I really think we... Uh... Should see other people. Was he just being nice this whole time? He forced down a lump in your throat. It's... It's okay. You can say whatever you need to. I'm sorry if this will upset you, but... I have to be open and honest about what I want. May I... Kiss you? Ah, I do love when the guy asks that. Oh, Papyrus. What? Perhaps that was a bit too soon for our first date. I apologize. I should... No, wait! I want you to kiss me. Without another word, Papyrus inches his way over to you. The closer he gets, the louder his soul seems to beat. Cute. Nice reference. Or was that yours? Maybe it was both. Soon his smile is but a breath away from your lips. You tilt your head and lean in ever so slowly. And he does the same. Until finally your lips and his smile meet in the sweetest, softest of kisses. Neither of you dare to deepen the kiss, worried that the slightest movement would shatter the moment. Eventually, you both pull away. And neither one can look the other in the eye. Well, uh, this was quite the night, wasn't it? Y yes very quite it was we should probably y yeah we should do you want to uh, go on another maybe sometime <laughs> sometime y yes i'd love to if you want to i absolutely absolutely do ah um good night Papyrus. Uh, good night, sunshine. Ah, he called her sunshine again. Nice. Sweet. Super cute. Blushing bones and timid kisses. Ending number two. Yay! Nailed it. All right. Let's see. What's that one? <laughs> the two different blushy faces. So cute. Okay. Let us load. Continue. All right, Sansy boy. It's time for the puns. You look so cool. It's ice to see you. Oh my god, really? <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I think Sans gave you that pun. Oh, come on, you know me. Then he'd be right. Sans, shh. But flurry not. 
I'll teach you cooler ones. Flurry not. Oh, Sans got shut down! <laughs> Undyne, please. You make me fall in love with you. Eh, everyone's a critic. Well then, shall we start the date? Oh, yeah, of course. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's not toast. This isn't toast. Pardon me? This is sparkling cider. <laughs> <laughs> you hear Sans and Undyne laughing in the background. Stop laughing, you guys! <laughs> okay, Sans. That was good. Guess you were completely beside her yourself. Badumch. Don't push it. Uh, perhaps you misunderstood. I wasn't referring to a slightly scorched carbohydrate. It's an accurate description of toast. I was asking you to raise your glass in honor of something. Oh yeah, I knew that. Were you pulling my leg bone then? A little. Are you asking me to be honest? Human, you are very odd. <laughs> he raises his glass. To us. Aw, oh, that's nice. And you do the same. To us. And you clink your glasses together. Papyrus is like, I need to take this into my own hands. Speaking of hands. You squeeze Papyrus's hands and smirk. <laughs> oh? Did you need a hand? Oh my god. Whatever am I going to do with you? <laughs> I know, you're going to have two in the family now. You just love being a handful. Oh, got me. <laughs> Does that make me good or bad? I've always believed you were good. Did I not make it obvious enough? He squeezes your hands. You're good to me. And good for me. Aw. And goodness knows what I'd do if I didn't have you in my life. Goodness. Papyrus. Let's go! <laughs> Undyne's so supportive. You walk with Papyrus towards the apartment entrance. And instead of holding his hand, you give him a playful bump with the hip. Ha ha! Amuse, Papyrus returns the favor. Someone's rather mischievous tonight, but because you're very cute, I'll let bye bones be bye bones. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried you'd leave me bonely. Now you're just ribbing me. Okay, okay, wait a minute. I have a question. I always thought you didn't like puns. Did you have a change of heart? Well, that's a common misconception about me. I don't really hate puns. In fact, I've made my fair share before. This is true. I just don't like it when certain monsters named Sans use them to exasperate me. Yeah, that's why I wasn't using them, because I'm like, you're going to know these are Sans puns. You're going to be like, Sans! Especially when said monster is trying to get out of his responsibilities. By, uh, boondoggling. Oh, I gotcha. So you do think they're punny. Ha! Yeah. Huh, I win! You should reconsider that statement. I can still get the better of you. Oh yeah? You didn't say any puns just now. And there's no way you're stopping mine. I'm pun-stoppable! You stop talking when Papyrus steps closer to you. For someone who's pun-stoppable, you're awfully quiet all of a sudden. His hand rests on your chin, tilting your head slightly to one side. I suppose now you understand. And he closes the distance between his smirk and your parted lips. You can't help but giggle into the kiss. He responds by kissing you just a little bit firmer. <laughs> Super cute. When he pulls away, a look of triumph graces his features. Now... What was that about who won? Okay, I may concede defeat tonight. Okay, you win this time. I suppose that means we'll need a next time. Definitely. I look forward to it then. Good night, sunshine. Good night, Papyrus. That was really nice. I felt very natural, actually. <laughs> Jokes on you, kisses on me. Very nice indeed. Oh, I love that. All right, one more to go. 
so cute. <laughs> okay, let's load that bad boy again. Okay, now we gotta do a mixture of things. Let's do alphas first. And then do the... Let's do to romance. And then need a hand. Perfect. As you walk alongside him, you keep your hands to yourself. Your gaze falls to the ground, but you feel Papyrus looking at you. He stops walking. I have something I want to ask you. You swallow hard, forcing yourself to make eye contact. Y yeah? You seemed a bit all over the place today. Oh, you noticed. That's not a bad thing. I just need clarification. Did you enjoy our date? <laughs> yes! I did enjoy our date! Sorry if I confused you. I guess I wasn't sure how to act around you. I didn't want to make a bad impression. That's why I let the train wreck trio listen in. Accurate train wreck trio. Train wreck is a bit of an exaggeration. I don't think this date was awful. Completely the opposite. It was wonderful being with you. And that's the key word. You. Man, this guy is smooth. Smooth as his bones, I tell ya. Me? I want you. I want you to be you. I want you to be unapologetically, unabashedly you. After all, that's who I became oh so fond of. Papyrus. He steps forward and cups your face in his hands. As his thumb strokes your cheek, he gives you a reassuring smile, and he pulls you into a warm, tender kiss. Your cheeks burn up, and you're not sure what to do with your hands. Papyrus is quick to notice. He takes one of your hands and holds it against his chest. The thrumming of his soul tickles your palm. It's the silent answer to all your doubts. Eventually, he breaks the kiss. Now then, off you go. But I would love to do this again. Me too. Then it's a date. Good night, sunshine. Good night, Papyrus. Yay, we did it. What was that one called? I want you for you. Lovely. Thank you for playing. Thank you for making this. That was so adorable. Let's look at our extras just to confirm. <laughs> look at all these faces. <laughs> good all right guys well with that that was one romantic date hold the awkward that was super duper wholesome i enjoyed the heck out of that <laughs> all those endings were sweet and and you know like they had like something about them that was sweet and wholesome in its own way and i loved that it definitely pandered to certain personalities which is great uh i think I liked my my first ending the best. I just loved being like super upfront about it. And uh, yeah, that would probably be my canon ending myself. But which one was your favorite of the endings for Sweet Papyrus? Were you, are you more of a Alphys, an Undyne, a Sans? Or are you a mix of all three? Comment below. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you guys for joining me. I will have a link to this in, in the description in case you would like to date a skeleton yourself. Would highly recommend. <laughs> but that is it for me today, guys. Thank you once again. And until next time, I will see you later.